Hey guys, uh, welcome to Disrupt It Yourself. I just wanted to do a quick project review video of the Pi Girl 2. Um, really fun project. Had a lot of fun building it and almost as much fun playing it, which says a lot because I really love building these projects. So, uh, again, no way in. Um, Pedro from Adafruit really knocked it out of the park on this one. Um, they've always done a really good job with all their projects, and all the Pi Girl uh, projects have been awesome. Uh, I have to say, though, that they've um, they're just getting better with each iteration. So this one has been really cool. Um, they've, there's definitely some key improvements that they've made on this one. Um, probably one of the biggest improvements, of course, is that there's a PCB for the gamepad buttons. So rather than using a permaproto and having to solder a bunch of wires, um, this time you have the ease of just sticking, tacking the buttons on, and then soldering to the back putting your connector on and plugging a cable in directly. Um, so that's one big plus in my opinion. Um, the other thing that is really great is um, it overall you've just got a lot less wires going on inside. Um, so as you're putting your project together, uh, you kind of just really know a lot more about what's going on. With the previous project, like even just the Pi Girl Pocket, which I loved, uh, when you have a problem, it's a little bit scary because you go back in there and you're kind of worried about fixing one thing and breaking another, but that's really not how this project felt. It was a lot more straightforward. You just follow the guide, do it right, and when you're done, you have an awesome project. Um, let's see. The other thing that I really enjoyed about this one is the L and R buttons on the back, which is really great because I play a lot of Game Boy Advance games on them, um, which, by the way, run amazingly. So even some of the more demanding ones, uh, and like some of the more demanding Super Nintendo games run really well. Um, another little thing is, I just found out from Noe that they've released, or they've managed to get the RetroPie version 3 running, um, which will allow for some other really cool stuff that wasn't even possible just recently on the same Pi Girl 2. All right, so we're just going to get started here. I'll let you guys uh, watch a sped up version of the highlights of the build. I already did the electronics as far as soldering um, the parts for the majority of the, uh, of the steps in the assembly. There are a few things that later I changed or uh, made a few modifications to, but you'll get a pretty good idea from this video of what all of the main steps are. Um, here I'm just uh, making sure all the buttons are, are properly placed and lining up well before I uh, put on the gamepad PCB. Um, that is mentioned in the guide to make sure that if you're interested in this project, um, make sure you go to learn.adafruit.com and you'll see, uh, you might need to search for it, it might be a ways down there, but it's called the Pi Girl 2. Really, really great project. I'm happy with the way it turned out. I actually did one earlier on um, and then had a little mishap that uh, actually wound up kind of ruining the original case. Uh, fortunately, none of the electronics were broken, but there was a little drop and the case cracked. So this is actually kind of the second um, assembly. But anyway, I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. Like I said, I did make a few changes that you'll see here in a little bit, but the assembly is is really, um, I don't want to say easy, it's still a challenge. There's uh, a bit to do, but um, the soldering isn't too, too difficult. Um, and there's just uh, a dozen connections or so to make. And the gamepad PCB certainly makes um, the buttons a lot easier. Plus, it just makes them more reliable because um, there's you have that just a lot less of a chance to make accidental solder bridges which really was kind of a potential problem before. But that's definitely remedied now. That's taken care of with this gamepad PCB. That's got to be the biggest improvement here. Even on top of the fact that we've got the Raspberry Pi 2 that's just so much more powerful. And it almost seems silly saying that now because now that I'm publishing this video, um, I was working on it all week. Now we know about the Pi 3, but the Pi 2 still has great performance, um, it works really well, even without um, going crazy and overclocking it. I've still had a lot of fun, I've managed to play some good N64 games. I'm still working on um, getting Dreamcast working, but the performance for the N64 has been good. The one game that's a little bit slow at the moment seems to be um, Super, Super Smash Bros. 
seems to run at somewhere between half speed and like maybe a little bit faster than half speed, but it's definitely slow. So I'll figure out um, what I should do for that. But um, oh well. At this point, we're almost done uh, making a few connections here at the end. I showed it a little bit earlier on, but uh, that screwdriver, that electric screwdriver that I'm using, I got it at a home improvement store locally, um, Lowe's. I'm sure you can find it elsewhere. I think the brand is General. Um, but it's just a small uh, powered screwdriver. It doesn't have a lot of torque. But even when I'm, since it's so small and easy to work with, when I'm at a part of a build where uh, maybe I need a little bit more torque, it almost just acts as a ratcheting screwdriver anyway. So it's still super helpful. And it makes screwing in all of these little parts a lot easier and I'm not um, giving it too much force that, like you might with just a normal manual screwdriver. So I do recommend something like that if you can get a hold of it. And here you can see um, a few of the modifications that I made. On the side there, that's actually an LED. The funny story is that was where I was going to put the headphones and then realized it doesn't fit. So that brass thing at the bottom is actually where I ended up putting the headphone jack and just put an LED on the side and connected that to the um, low battery indicator for the PowerBoost 1000C. And there it is, that's the LED turned on, so the battery is low there. Um, the, I did print it in layers with different colors, so the lights do shine through the clear sections, and it has a cool glow. That kind of effect was a lot easier to accomplish on my RigidBot, just because it's so easy to change filaments. Um, if anyone's thinking about doing this project, I can't recommend it highly enough. It's the funnest thing I've done in a long time, really. I have to give this 9 out of 10. It's a fantastic project and I highly recommend it to all of you. Um, thank you, by the way, for 100 subscribers, our first milestone. And thank you to Noe and Pedro from Adafruit for making such an awesome project.